Hi, I'm Eloise Lytton Hitchens. I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Uh, this presentation today, or short reflection session really, is about what happened um, during the week when the kids were staying with me um, and in our experiment with uh, the Kids Move Out experiment. So, um, as a reminder, um, we, I started a family experiment with uh, the children because they were treating me quite badly. Um, must be taken into consideration that I have um, encouraged and taught them to do that as their parent, but I want to correct what's happened and um, particularly um, the two boys, we have a daughter and two sons, and the two boys treat women pretty badly just because of the attitudes of their, of their dad and because of some of the injuries I've had I've been quite accepting of that. So I'm trying to change that. Um, our daughter has a few different um, issues but she's quite rebellious and feels like she doesn't really want to uh, look after a space or, or uh, treat, treat, in this instance, me well either. So I'm challenging some family addictions, uh, particularly about the treatment of women and also about basically cleaning up and being self-responsible in a home. And these things, um, what I've, the actions that I've taken are that I informed the children and I gave them two months to come up with enough money or change, it was really an opportunity to change their attitude, um, which means they have to go through an emotional process in order to go from feeling like, well, mum should do everything for us, to um, actually a shift in, them, in themselves of like, oh, hold on, no, I'm responsible for my, my own life and I need to also clean up and contribute. And they'd also need to face some codependence between the three of them, which uh, codependence I mean is they rely on a different one of them to do different things. And they pick up uh, where one of them doesn't like doing something, the other one will do it for them in a barter exchange to get something from the other one. So there's a bit of bartering and they also rely on each other very heavily um, to sort of get, get certain um, emotional needs met and physical needs met. So all of those things are being challenged. Um, they chose not to change their attitude, which would have been the easiest thing and they could have stayed inside and I would have loved them to stay inside and we would have had, a, well I don't know how it would be but um, I'm sure it would have been better than what it has been. Instead they chose not to and so in the two months they had the opportunity to work to earn enough money to purchase tents. Uh, or uh, the, What I said to them is they need to have some kind of house. So they started looking up houses, but realised very quickly that those houses were, you know, 10 to 15 to 500 grand to a million dollars. So they were looking at caravans and um, tiny houses and houses and all kinds of different things. So they came to the conclusion that all they could really afford and purchase in two months was a tent. So each of them brought a tent. Um, they worked through... a you know, they worked physically, did work and labour form jobs that I wanted done other than household jobs. So other than um, like washing up and drying up and sweeping floors and maintaining the house and home environment, um, there were things like uh, moving wood chip or because um, we're doing a lot of different environmental projects around here, uh, moving rocks and filling in erosion on our roads, removing um, certain plants that are... Um, weeds that we needed to, to remove in certain places on the property um, or sometimes I'd get them to you know, weed around all the house or clean my cars and different things like that and cars are paid sometimes not other times because they are used um, like the children also use them so it's part of maintenance um, but depending on what was happening it would depend on what jobs they got and also how much uh, money they got paid so they had a standard hourly rate, but that's actually changed because their attitude was, we'll work enough to get $10. And, um, and so they wouldn't ever finish a job or they wouldn't do that properly. So now we've made it, no, this job is worth $10 and uh, however long it takes you is how long it takes you. And it needs to be done properly with a really good, with like an attitude of desiring to do it and doing it well. And if those criteria are not met, then they don't get, um, well, they don't, they don't, one, they don't really usually start the job, but they also don't get paid until that job is done properly. Because um, we've had to modify it um, due to the attitude towards wanting to get money without really doing any work. So that's sort of an aside and background information to what's been happening. 
So this week, which was uh, began on Sunday the 27th of Feb uh, January, um, and that was a Sunday, and then until the following Sunday, um, these are the things that happened in our home. So um, I'd asked um, uh, Peter, the kid's dad, to take the children shopping to get the food for the week because I'd been working the week before and I, I didn't have any food left by the end of the week. And they, they went shopping and um, they didn't really have a restriction on, on how much to... Um, uh, how much money that it would cost and they also didn't have a restriction on what they could or couldn't buy. Interestingly enough, what they chose to purchase um, was quite expensive, like in, in, in that they got quite a lot of packaged goods rather than fresh foods. And it cost um, like sort of our, what would, would cost for all of us. Uh, so around, I think it was around like $200 or something to, uh, to have all of the food that they got. And that would usually include my shop as well with them. Or 200, 250 is usually our weekly shop, and they, yeah, they brought a lot of different things. But they got into their fridge, and once they'd actually unpacked everything, they realised that they didn't really have very much fresh fruit or fresh vegetables, and so they were going to, um, they kind of were like, oh dear, like we've kind of done, like we don't, we don't have enough food, um, in the sense of making salads and things that that they like to eat. So. Anyway, I went, well, I suppose, you know, you, you, that's just how it is. Like, we're not going shopping until the next time that um, you come here, which is a week away. And so, what are you going to do? And I just kind of left it at that. Anyway, I hear about five minutes later, um, Charlie, who's a middle child, he's round the front with the kids going, Izzy and Archie, we're rationing. You have three cucumbers each, they're little mini cucumbers. You have four tomatoes, and you only have, um, you know, anyway, he, he listed all these different things of how many they had because that was, he'd worked out that yeah, they only had this much food and that, um, <laughs> that they could only have that many for the whole week if they divided it between three. So that was pretty funny. But it also, but it also taught, it's taught them a valuable lesson of one, what they choose to purchase and to eat and, and the consequences of not buying um, certain items. And also that um, they have a feeling because uh, Pete and I have given them everything they want and we haven't placed a lot of restrictions on them or boundaries. They don't really understand yet that you, you know, when you're working, you can't really just have all of the food that you want, all the different kinds of foods you want, unless you make enough money to do that. And sometimes like, they don't really know what it's like to go without or not to have something. And so, though I know when I go to the shopping, I know, okay, like, you know, this is what I can get, or this is what I can't get, or this is the funds that I've got this week, or whatever it is. Um, they don't have that concept. And they've never really had the concept of like, oh, we can't have something. <laughs> Their concept is like we can have whatever we want whenever we want it so yeah I thought it was quite an interesting uh, lesson for them so we'll see how they that goes now since then I've had to modify the way that we're going to be doing food so no longer will they be going uh, shopping with uh, their dad just on a, a free reign I'm going to give them um, a certain amount we're going to go and do a shop and figure out how much it actually costs to get a lot of different fresh food and like really healthy options and how much it actually costs to get the amount that we actually need to eat to make some good meals throughout the week. And um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them each um, a third of that amount of money and see what they do with it um, because the children have a tendency to want to do things on their own and not share or not work as a team. And so what I suspect is going to happen is they're going to each try and just use their own money and not share or pull funds. And they're going to find out that they might not have much food for the week. Um, and then we'll see whether or not they figure out that if they pull funds and they put it all together, they can probably get more and share things. But we'll wait and see. So a lot of the experiments that I'm doing at the moment or the things that I'm trying to set up are firstly intended that they see what they're really doing um, and they get their full natural consequence of the action that they take.
Secondly is that they actually start to be educated through experience of what it means if you don't buy enough fresh food for the week, for instance, of the consequence of your actions, really. And thirdly, I'm hoping that they will actually generate some desire um, to find out or work things out themselves a little bit better than they are, um, because it's something that they've, uh, us as their parents, have sort of taken away from them because we've done everything for them, so they've never really had to seek for information or um, seek to find out things or understand anything. And so, with the, um, so for instance, with the food, experiment that we're going to do or the food shopping experiment um, before they went shopping the last time they did have to write a list and then pass the list past me but um, what ended up happening is they didn't purchase everything that was on their list and even things that asked can we purchase these they hadn't brought them so um, that was just interesting in itself um, because they'd had a, apparently they'd had a shopping interaction where one of them got quite angry and um, well, one of them was trying to direct the other two so Archie the youngest was trying to direct the other two and the other two got angry and didn't want to be directed by him so they ended up not getting items that Archie had asked them to get and he with his stuff didn't go and do it either so they ended up without a lot of stuff um, yeah, so it's kind of, it's quite interesting, but what I'm finding is that now the children aren't living inside, I'm less, um, I'm less cranky to be quite frank, because it's not like a constant, like, battle of having to clean up, and I can kind of observe from a distance through the door about what's happening, so I can still see and hear what's happening, because they are living mostly on the veranda, because it's quite hot at the moment, rather than actually in their tents. And so I kind of get a, a good feel of, of where they're at and what they think and how they're processing information. And I also can, um, when I desperately want to go out and be in my own uh, addiction, and by addiction I mean like, I really, really, really want to do something for them or to hold them something or take away a consequence for them because then I feel like I'm a good mom or like, you know, I'm being helpful. I can, um, often I've got just enough space that as I'm walking to the door, I go, hold on, stop, back you go, Aloe, just sit down and listen. And um, I'm getting better at doing that. And that actually gives the children the opportunity to actually have to work things out for themselves. They don't have interfering mum. Um, and they have to start thinking for themselves. Um, or if they don't, and a lot of the time they don't, um, they then get a consequence sometime later, like either depending on what their decision is, quite shortly time later or sometimes a few days or weeks or, or whatever later. So an example of that is that um, Izzy's gazebo. So we'll... Uh, so Izzy's gazebo. Uh, something else that's happened this week is that um, two weeks ago, so this is the Sunday the 27th of the week, uh, starting Sunday the 27th, Two weeks before that, when the children were with me last, because they do a week about rotation between um, Peter and I, so their dad and I. And two weeks before that, Isabella's um, guy ropes on her gazebo began perishing. They actually broke, so she tied them up and, and did it, but it's quite a cheap gazebo, and it's not very good quality. Um, and the guy ropes literally within, how long she had it? She's only had it up for a month and so four weeks and all of the tie downs have have disintegrated um anyway she knew that they disintegrated and during the time when she was um, at her dad's she did go looking for certain ropes but she couldn't find the right ones and she didn't think anything else of that the week she was with me there ended up being a huge wind while she was at school and it blew her gazebo over and actually damaged it so she got home and she's pretty like um, angry, um, but she didn't feel her anger. She suppressed her anger, and uh, we. I said, "Well, what do you want to do?" And she said, "Well, I want to put it back up and and everything." So I helped her. Um, she asked if I'd help her do that, and I did. But she had lost tent pegs, so she didn't have full tent pegs to actually tie it down, and she still didn't have the guy ropes to tie it down. So we discussed options of what she could use or how she could actually do it. And she came up with some builder's string. Unfortunately, she, she, though she used hemp pegs to put the guy ropes back in, she didn't use them to actually put down um, the footings of like the poles. They have like sort of a little 
a hole in the the bottom that touches the ground where you can put a peg and, and put it in and she didn't have very sturdy ones of those so she only had these like very very small ones and the earth that they've decided to um, live on is just wood chips so it's, it's very easy for things to blow out so the next day uh, it blew off again and actually completely destroyed itself which is, is not very not a very good air completely broke and it was unusable and she was still really angry but she didn't fully feel her anger um, uh, underneath that and yeah anyway so she's well well this is where I then stepped in and um, had a, rather an addictive interaction with her um, she, she helped me to get it in, at the house and, and we sort of made it so that it was squashed down enough and uh, so that we could transport it to the dump but the following day I took it to the dump trying to be helpful mother and it was when we were at the dump um, Charlie said to me mum you just like did that for Izzy like isn't that like you know actually doing what she needed to do like she's not she's not actually taking full responsibility for for the whole thing and I was like you're spot on like I just did it you know and after as soon as he said that I was like ah oh, I'm still wanting to pick up the pieces after the children and actually make it okay rather than having her like just leaving it and that she had to actually figure out and ask mum can I take it to the dump or figure out how she's going to get it to the dump and how she's going to get it out of the dump and give her the full consequence of that action. So I went straight into my addiction and actually took away an opportunity for her to learn something in that sense. But that was a great learning curve because I learned, all right, I'm still willing to engage addictively in this situation. Um, and I also have four, and I've got reasons, you know, what I say is reasons for doing that, um, which is just about not wanting to feel certain things. And um, yeah, Izzy lost the opportunity to um, well, I sort of took that opportunity away from her to fully feel it. Now, interestingly enough, um, there's a few interesting things. One, uh, due to denying her anger, she actually came up with a sty in her uh, left eye, like, oh no, her right eye. Her right eye. So she ended up with a very inflamed, um, very inflamed sty in her eye that, that didn't go down, and she, she, she was quite upset about that. And what else happened as well? Oh, and it was very interesting. Her attitude was like, well, I'll just go get a new one. And I said to her, well, you can, but are you going to get the same type? You know, like, what have you learnt from this experience? And it was very interesting to, to just see that she hadn't actually thought about what, 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 what you know, about, um, about the consequences of what have happened or the learnings that she could learn from that. Like, if you buy a cheaper gazebo, you know, some parts of it perish faster or disintegrate faster. Um, if you buy a cheaper gazebo and you, or you really you don't tie it down and you don't fix a problem as soon as it happens, or with the guy ropes as soon as they started breaking, I would have gone off and got new guy ropes or just put my gazebo away until I'd got it. Neither of those things she thought of. And um, a friend of um, mine, Tristan, he was over and we were talking about different things and we were asking her um, and the other and the boys about well what could you do or what have you learnt from this by observing either Isabella's or Isabella literally what have you learnt and Isabella didn't even like click on like I could have just put or packed away my gazebo um, and it would took uh, like ages for her to go oh I could have just packed it up so it was very interesting just to see that where there are sort of blank parts in the children and and where their attitudes at and then to actually apply that to myself and um, Peter their dad about how how have we taught them that like like it's sort of highlighting the gaps in their education um, or their knowledge or what they're doing so um, I thought that was yeah a very interesting experience so with the gazebo, it was an opportunity to, for, Isa, for Isabella to one see about the choices she'd made in purchasing something that um, when when certain items are not made well, it's they they you know they're not good quality, they actually disintegrate very quickly. It also is an opportunity to talk about how you know in in the West particularly. Um, in, and in the children's attitude and in, it's been in um, Peter and my attitude as well of how you can just get a new one. Um, things are quite easy to access and what well, broke you can get a new one. It also highlighted that getting cheap stuff is very like it, 
it, it makes a lot of rubbish very quickly and I felt that uh, I had some feelings about that personally. Um, just that like it's such a waste and because you can't, like it's made of such flimsy metal, you couldn't really fix it. Um, so that was interesting. It also prompted a discussion, well, I uh, uh, suggested <laughs> Uh, a few things to them about well what could you do that that would be better that's not a gazebo because they're like well we could just get a gazebo and I was like well what other options do you have um, and it highlighted the children don't really go and research a lot of different things and neither have Peter and I in the past either so when I talk about I just want to make a point when I talk about uh, the children not doing certain things you all like must take into consideration that they've been educated in a certain way and they have certain emotional beliefs now that are pretty firmly entrenched due to the fact that all of them are over seven and so they're now acting on certain things they learnt as a child from Peter and I and, and their env immediate environment so the, fa the familial so I've noticed that when a child ha doesn't have certain education or they don't understand certain things or they act in certain ways that it's I always need to link it back and look at um, us as the parents so myself and Peter the dad and also at the family belief systems and, and what goes on in the family because that's been passed down to in order that the children now have certain beliefs um, and you can see the results of um, your beliefs and your own attitudes and um, the things you don't want to feel and so then what what I'm referring to as addictions, addictions. Um, meaning like uh, like like a smoking is an addiction or drinking can be an addiction you can have emotional addictions as well where you want a certain feeling and so you're willing to do a certain thing to get that feeling or um, you want to avoid a certain feeling and so you're, all in, you're willing to do certain things in order to avoid that certain feeling. And this experiment with the children and the gazebo incident, as we'll call it, uh, has taught me a lot about myself and about certain attitudes that I have that now the children have or that their dad has um, that, that they now have. And it brought up different feelings and emotions about me of what I want to actually do for the children in order for them to love me. Um, or to give me certain feelings. So the gazebo incidents has been interesting. The gazebo so far has not been replaced. Um, the feelings haven't fully been felt about it. And I think at the moment, because there's not like a heap of rain or sort of extreme weather conditions, I have a kind of a feeling that Iz is a little bit blase about it because she's not really being affected by anything. And in our home and family, only by taking action and will anybody really listen to anything when I say that the children and Peter will only really take seriously when actions are taken and that's one reason why the um, kids move out experiment happened because I talked to them so many times about just keeping their space tidy and, and it's not that they can't like when they're on their own with me they are quite capable and actually can do a very good job in cleaning and looking after the environment but they're making choices not to and so I had to make some choices about um, both love of myself and the environment and also really look at what I was teaching them by being a, the adult woman in their life uh, cleaning up their messes, picking up after them, taking away certain consequences um, and I felt that if I continue to do that, I mean, I also got feedback from um, friends of mine, very good friends of mine, who are so grateful for their feedback, um, Jesus, Mary, Tristan, just about how, like, the consequences of the things that I'm thinking are loving in the family and then what that might look like in 20 years. And they've given that feedback to me um, a lot over the last eight years. And in this, uh, now I think often about, oh, what is it going to be like if they're adults? What would it be like if they had partners? Would I really want them to be with a woman who they can treating them like they're treating me? Because it's not, it's not good. And so though I don't um, blame them for the way they treat me, because I feel that I've been very instrumental in approving of that, or like a, a, not approving, agreeing with it, um, just because of my own, that's how I feel I sh should be as a woman. And because of their father's definite approval and actual um, encouragement of that kind of behaviour. Um, 
I can see how they've got to where they are. Now I feel my responsibility as a parent is to learn about being a parent first and foremost um, and I want to do that from God because God's the, I feel the best parent there ever is and I want to learn yeah I want to learn how God parents uh, me and I've got some skills I need to learn because I have wanted to be parented not be a parent and so yeah as I'm learning then I can also then put in what I'm learning um, into practice with the children and what I'm noticing is when I do actions to do that I learn a lot about myself very rapidly so I'm noticing by taking actions um, that are in harmony with um, God's way or with in harmony with love and truth um, that I'm finding a lot out about being a parent um, or how I'm not being a good parent from God's perspective and when I say from God's perspective, I'm really I am saying from God's perspective. Um, God is the creator of the universe and our parent and the ultimate parent. And I'm um, having to learn, like we're having you're having to like discover and find out. And I've got some very good friends who um, who know a lot about God, uh, Jesus, Mary, and uh, Tristan, and they have they are very very helpful and. Um, offer a lot of very interesting opportunities um, that often I, my ears prick up when they talk about certain things they go oh, I'm going to try that or I, I think about it and then go and try it um, sometimes I just launch in and have a go, have a go as well um, and if you want to know more about uh, Jesus and Mary's teachings which is called Divine Truth you can go to their um, YouTube channel or website and that's www divinetruth.com and that's where I base um, I listen to a lot of their material and it's a lot about spiritual teachings about a relationship with God and um, has a load of different subject matter but um, yeah it's about living living God's way in a, in a total nutshell it's like it's about so it's so many different things but the what I'm I'm learning is that by developing and having a relationship with God is the fastest way to learn about yourself and about everything in the universe and so that's the um, road that I'm wanting to head down and what I'm experimenting with in my own life and what I'm trying to apply as well um, as a parent so I'll just give a little bit of background um, if you haven't watched any other videos on this channel is that at, at 25 I decided that well before 25 actually um, I decided I really wanted to have children. In fact, I felt this compulsive need to have children. Um, I didn't know at the time what, what that was about. I didn't even stop to consider what it was about. But um, when I was 25, I actually attracted um, a man into my life, Peter, who, who became my husband and is still at this, at this time my husband, um, though we're going through some separation at the moment. Um, and he... And I got together for a lot of different reasons. We got pregnant very, very quickly. And we ended up having children very quickly. What I realized um, after I met um, actually Jesus and Mary and started listening to the teachings of divine truth and them giving me um, personal feedback um, about, about a lot of issues of love and truth from God's perspective, I realized that I hadn't had children to love them. I'd actually had children to love me. And I have a major demand on the children that they should love me and that, that I, need, I need them to love me because I don't want to work through the grief of having not felt loved in my life and I also haven't wanted to um, love myself. I felt like I, I need to be loved from an external source, not God, uh, but people. And so I actually literally had children and gave them that role. Um, along with a lot of other things, but I want to talk about that one because it's going to come up. It's going to come up in this uh, little reflection. So that was 12 years ago that I had um, that I was pregnant, and yeah, I was I was pregnant 12 years ago, and um, yeah, and you can imagine having those feelings in you. Uh, the child's going to pick up a lot of those feelings and when they're born they're either going to depending on their personality and their circumstances will depend on how they react to having that demand upon them 
What I've noticed is that for a long time the children were, well, they still are really, in order for me to try and face that, the, I obviously, well, God's, it seems obvious now to me that they don't, they don't have, like, they don't treat me well and they don't have very much love for me, at, well, they don't have really any, and they don't want to, they don't even want to, because the demand coming out of me is such that I'll do whatever they want as long as they will give me a certain feeling. And they don't usually get that feeling, or give me that feeling, but because I'm like so desperate for, for wanting it, I keep, keep trying to get it from them. Um, and what I'm noticing is that, well, as Mary pointed out to me the other day, is that I'm giving the children a role, and at the moment particularly Isabella, um, because she's a girl and I want mummy's love very, very much at the moment. Um, I'm setting her up to have to do that for me, which I don't feel like when I think about it or when Mary's talked to me about it and Jesus has talked to me about it, I feel, it doesn't feel very nice inside of me. Um, but I can see that I'm desperate for that. So um, this experiment where the children have moved out into their own tents has been pretty fascinating because the first, um, yeah, the first day that I, um, the first day that they moved out, that they're actually, so they, they moved out all their stuff on one day, so it was a moving day, and then a sort of a setup day. And then, like so there's two days, and then on the third day, I was sitting inside, I was actually lying on my bed, I'd been quite sick. And I suddenly just had these compulsive feelings of like, I've got to go out and see the kids. Like I have to, I felt so guilty. I felt guilty that I wasn't out there with them. I felt guilty I wasn't spending time with them. I felt um, like this terrible sense of that I wasn't a loving uh, mother, that I was like neglecting them, that I was like treating them really badly, that I was doing terrible things to them and that I should never have like gone ahead with this. And it just all this worry and, and, and like freak out about what a bad person I was for, for not doing basically doing everything for the children. So I, di I didn't go out and act on it. I lay on my bed and just felt that and it was a very, very, very strong feeling. Um, and it made me realize that I desperately, like desperately want to feel like this, this, this good mum and that I'm willing to do a lot of different things with the children in order to get that feeling. And it doesn't really matter about what they do or don't do. It's about this feeling inside of me that actually drives that. So after I felt a little bit about that, not fully, but I'd, I'd allowed myself to at least acknowledge that feeling and um, I had a bit of a, a um, what I call a cry, which means I just had an emotional uh, experience. So I had had a bit of a cry, I felt quite angry, I felt um, quite worried and, and I let myself feel those feelings. That's what sometimes when I say I had a cry uh, means. I sort of expressed some emotion um, and, and it was whatever the emotion I felt at the time. I, I, I can't say, if, you know, if it was for someone else, what they would feel would be different to what I felt. But I had to feel, I just let whatever I felt be felt. And then uh, sometime later, I actually went outside and I, I just sat outside with the children and usually I engage them and I talk to them and I, um, I, I spend a lot of energy like trying to find out about them or asking questions or uh, giving them information, um, like all kinds of different stuff. And this time I just sat there. And I just sat there and I was like, okay, we'll just see, see how it goes. We'll see if, if you know, like I'm here and I, and I felt like I'm here and I'd love to spend time with you guys, but we'll just see if you want to spend time with me or not. Um, and not in a, uh, like, you have to, more just like, no, I'm just going to sit here, but I'm not going to just give out as I usually do. I'm going to try something different. And they paid no attention to me, um, like none, which, uh, and, and the reaction you're seeing on the thing is like, oh my goodness, <laughs> no attention to me. <laughs> there was the feeling of like, I want attention. Um, and there was nothing, nothing, like nothing at all. Um, and I've got some emotional feelings about that. But I just waited, and as I waited, um, I realized that, wow, I'm so worried that I'm not giving enough or I'm not spending enough quality time with them or 
um, doing things with them, but actually a relationship's two ways and, and they don't really one understand how to have relationships. Two, um, because everything's been given to them and as everything like physically they've had all their needs met and they feel quite entitled but also emotionally and now with people I know and I notice it in their um, with their peers at school and with their teachers and I actually notice it across the board with many children in the society day it's very rare I've found for a child to actually be genuinely interested either in another child or in um, parents um, or adults Often I see adults doing a lot of work to be interested in the children or adults not interested in children at all as well. So there's not a lot of connection I don't see and I realise with the children that they don't have a lot of connection and they don't yet really have a desire to have some connection. So I stayed out there, I don't know, for half an hour or so and when nothing changed I just got up quietly and went inside and lay on my bed and had another feel about that. <laughs> um, and so this experiment is very, very fascinating for that reason that, that I'm learning very rapidly about myself and having just a bit of extra physical space is, is helping me to have um, a little bit more space to reflect and think about what's really happening and then I can sort of leave the situation and go in. I, I do have to uh, close my blinds um, in my, when I go into my room because otherwise sometimes little faces are at the door trying to, trying to um, get me to do things or come out or give them what they want. Um, so if I have the blind closed they can't see if I'm in there. So that's something else to look at. I also found out on that incident of the guilt and feeling like a bad mother um, for not spending a whole heap of time with my children. It was very interesting because I met uh, a friend who had come over to pick something up actually on that day and uh, she said to me, I, don't, I think it was about four or five days later, she said to me, oh I came over and there's the kids on the veranda and the poor things, I just felt so sorry for them, like they just, they can't come inside and they can't do this and they can't do that. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I made this correlation that when I felt like the height of like this ho horrible, horrible feeling, she had actually been picking the thing that she needed to pick up. And so I was like, wow, like that opened up another part of it. Like I have those feelings in me, whether or not anyone does anything. But I also have this feeling of when people project at me that I'm, when I say by project, they um, don't own their feelings about it and they sort of have a feeling towards me that I'm doing the wrong thing or that I'm being a bad mum. And they, instead of like just stating that, to me, they, their, their feelings are coming at me, but they're not always saying it. And that's sort of a projection, or what I, I see as a projection. Um, and their feelings coming at me, and I realized, wow, like when I'm really concerned as well about people thinking I'm a bad mother. And a lot of it's about that, is that I have um, uh, some feelings about the perception of others towards what kind of person or mother I am. I'm invested in their feelings. Um, meaning I care about their feelings more than what's true at times um, in order again to avoid feeling some of my own feelings that, that are inside of me. So that was quite an interesting uh, time and then I've had some other attractions on this same subject where um, the children have actually told the dad that um, that I don't spend time with them and that I don't do anything with them and I don't do activities with them and so when he told me that I was I had this like oh my goodness like you know I'm not a good good mom and he's doing a lot of activities with them and and all those things when they go to his place and um, I felt like yeah I felt like it was it, it didn't feel very nice on, on the receiving end of that but I also realized from that is that well one the dad and I are not really in agreement about what we're doing um, two, that what I'm trying to do is to stop doing the things I've always been doing and because there has to be some kind of uh, difference in situation I'm finding for me to actually find out why I'm doing things. If I keep doing the same thing that I've always done, then I don't get to actually feel any reasons why I've done those things. So only by stopping or 
trying something new, um, like trying a different action. So the new action was stay in my room and feel the guilt rather than go and try and get away from that by engaging with the children. And then once I'd at least felt some of that to actually go out and instead of engaging the children again, just to sit and be there and see what happened. Those are two things that um, I don't usually do. And when the children were living in the house, because they took up, they take up a lot of space um, because they're very demanding, um, meaning they want what they want when they want it. And it's an emotional barter that I'm just always giving out. So I get quite exhausted. And, and now I'm noticing that having this space and doing this experiment is causing me to just discover different things about myself that I, I wasn't discovering before. Um, partially that's because of the circumstances, but partially it's because I actually want to know more about it now. Um, in fact, if I didn't want to know more about it, I still wouldn't be seeing it. So, so it, it's mostly about that I want to know what I'm doing um, and see it. It doesn't mean that I feel great about it, but I, I definitely do want to see it because I want to change what I've, I've done with the kids now. So in summary, I had children for, for a lot of uh, reasons that were not based on loving the children or about teaching the children truth and um, God's way and, and when I talk about I, I desire to teach them God's way but if you know you, you just even just teaching them basic ethics or how to treat others and how what love is towards themselves and others and you know I, I'm it, it's like I'm learning I, I'm having to learn because if I don't learn myself then I can't teach them anything and I know when I started this process wow like nine years ago um, I had no idea, like I was clueless about what was love or what real truth was or when I say that it's not that it sometimes didn't come out of me but I'd never thought about it long enough to really figure out why my life was like it was and um, I've been so blessed to have um, amazing friends who have given me so much personal feedback and also that I've applied a lot of what they've said. Um, or at least some of what they've said and had my own experiences so that I now know that it actually works and I know that every time that I'm unwilling to try something it's because of a feeling inside of me or I'm wanting to hold on to something as it is and every time there's a problem in my life I know I can do something about that um, and if I don't want to or I'm saying oh I can't do anything about that I know I'll oh, hold on you can, you just don't want to for some reason. And I feel like having this wonderful, simple method of how to like live God's way has been such a blessing. Um, and I'm just very, very, very grateful to the teachings of Divine Truth for that. Very grateful. Um, and so that's uh, Jesus and Mary, who are very good friends of mine. They uh, teach these teachings and they, yeah, they've changed my life. So the simplicity of what I'm learning about um, God's way and Jesus put it into some quite simple, um, like a simple way to understand is that we receive truth or we hear certain truth then we need to, like then if you um, like apply or take action on that truth, then you, you, you know, you, um, then you have an experience. And when you have an experience, then it grows some faith. Um, and that makes it stronger that you now have had your own personal experience. And so then there's some more truth that you can have. And if you apply that to your life and you actually do so, you actually act upon that truth and then you allow yourself to observe and feel the consequences of that, then you get grow more faith and more faith and it builds and builds and builds. And then it ends up that you can then receive God's love and, and you grow enough faith to realize that God's um, system works. And then, well, uh, for me, there's been a natural progression of wanting to then find out, well, who's the person who created all this thing and how does it work? And also I've heard, um, and now had some experiences of that the fastest way to find out truth and information is from God and the source itself. So there's the methods like the conscience, which is, uh, from my understanding, 
the um, conduit between sort of God, God's sort of like inbuilt it in the human so that there's a direct communication line. Like you can literally ask God any question, the whole universe, and get an answer. Now, depending on how open you are to your emotions, because God communicates through feelings, um, will depend on how much you can receive of the answer. But you can actually ask a yes, no question and get a firm feeling of, you know, that it's right or not. You need to find out where the feeling's coming from. Is it is from God or is it is from spirits or is it because you want to believe it? Um, and that takes some experimenting to, to, to actually feel the difference between God and spirits and yourself and other people. But once you do that and then you hear truth and you apply it and you do the cycle again and um, you act on it and then it builds faith and you and you you grow and you see that some things in your life change um, for me that was pretty inspiring and um, well one it was inspiring seeing other people doing it and seeing them change before my very eyes <laughs> uh, secondly then when I actually tried it myself, seeing immediate changes in my environment was pretty amazing. And I've done a, a little snippet on that about how uh, Jesus and Mary gave me some feedback about the children. And just by owning truth, like just by stating the truth, like the truth of how I felt in my heart at any one time and just honestly just stating that truth as it was, like I, I am angry or I feel pissed off about this or I'm really freaked out about this person immediately there was a change in the children's behavior going from like frenetic overpowering like clinging to me all this stuff to just going off and quietly playing so as soon as the, I matched my true like internal truth with like like really honor like acknowledging this is my feeling and that is the truth of this right now uh, it was like so instantaneous that I was just like this is so the combination of seeing people um, in my, like having friends who actually were changing and I could see the impact and I could see the dynamic and also the way they treated me was very consistent and very loving and very truthful um, and they didn't treat me differently from anybody else. There was a lot of equality in the way they treated me. So having this external experience and then experimenting with my own experiences, so having that internal experience, um, it, it helped me to grow my faith. Um, I'm calling it faith, sort of... I wouldn't have, I'm using that word, it's like, a, you know, um, and I want to describe it, it's like, for me it was that I had experiences and so I, it wasn't just someone telling me anymore, it was that, no, I did that, I felt that, I experienced that, I know that is true. And so that to me, um, I think that to me is what my understanding of what faith is it's like this this knowledge that that no well I think there's two things one is like sort of having faith in things that are good that I haven't yet experienced so I had to have some faith in like okay well I like so before I even started maybe I'm using the wrong terminology because before I even started I had to go okay well I'm going to try it without having any experience and I base that on, well, I can see that Jesus and Mary have changed and I can see that what they're doing, like I like what they're doing and I, I like where their relationship's headed and I like, they, I really like the truth and I, I want to do that. So I had this sort of feeling of like, no, I like that. I want to give it a go. And, then I, and I also felt that, well, maybe if I do it, I might get a similar result. I don't know, but I might. And then I'll try it and then I'd have an experience and then, then it's sort of like, uh, then it became like an actual solid feeling in myself of like, no, this is what happened and this is how it is. And I'm sorry, I don't have key words for that, but that is what happened for me. <laughs>